So let's go through my top 10 list of games that I played in 2020. I ended up playing around 43 games last year, and the top 10 for this list will be coming from those 43 games, which includes a lot of older games that I replayed, as well as some newer ones and anything in between. So, so with that, let's just go right in. So number 10 was Enter the Gungeon. This one was fun. It's a deceptively short game with a top-down view where you shoot gun-related stuff with guns going pew, pew, pew. The controls are tight, the gameplay is fun, the atmosphere is both silly and intense, and the random weapon element really makes each playthrough different. Even though you do effectively play the game over and over and over and over and over and over and over, I mean, I put like 90 hours into this game before I got tired of it. Still, I'd highly recommend it. it it's just really pew, 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 pew. Number nine, Super Mario World. I don't know how much of my enjoyment was because of nostalgia or because the game is legitimately good. I think I, I would recommend it, but I do feel like after playing a lot of more modern platformers, it might be a bit disappointing to see how simple this game is, but whatever, I liked it a lot. Number eight, Ring Fit Adventure. The gameplay seems a bit silly with this ring and hopping around, but honestly, I had fun with it. Basically, the game is like a simple adventure where you do exercises to progress. It reminded me a lot of Wii Sports, which is a game that was a lot of fun. If I played that game this year, that would be like in this top 10, I'm telling you what. The whole doing exercises to beat enemies is a really fun idea, and it's a shame the story doesn't have much depth to it, or there isn't more variety to the exercises, because I think there's a lot of potential with this gamification of exercise. And yeah, it's a, a lot of fun. I'm still playing it on and off right now. Number seven, Mario Tennis for the Game Boy Advance. Oh, this, this is one of my favorite games ever. I almost put this at the number one spot because it's like one of the best. It's an RPG where you play tennis, 10 out of 10. Number six, The Last of Us. All right, so I played both The Last of Us 1 and The Last of Us 2 this year. And although The Last of Us 2 is bigger and more beautiful and tells a more broader story than the original, the tightness and simplicity of the first game just makes it more memorable to me. I was going to make a video review for The Last of Us 2, but I feel like I need to replay it in order to get a more solid view of the game. I teeter between thinking that The Last of Us 2 is one of the greatest games I've played to just it's kind of average and could have been better. And I know a lot of people dislike this game, but I don't think it's a bad game. I think my biggest issues with it is actually something that I mentioned in my original Last of Us review. In the first Last of Us game, they skip over months of the story where I feel like stuff happened that I wanted to see, and Last of Us 2 just kind of does that far worse. But yeah, I'm talking about the sequel too much. The Last of Us 1 is just great. Go play it if you haven't. Number 5, Horizon Zero Dawn. This game has an amazing story, the world building is incredible, and the game has robot dinosaurs in it. Robot dinosaurs. Five-year-old me loves this, and robot dinosaurs is just awesome in itself. But fighting robot dinosaurs and taking them down with this weird futuristic yet caveman-esque technology, it, it's just awesome. Sure, some of the characters are stiff and some of it is just dumb, but I really loved every second of it and I cannot wait for the sequel. Number four, Tomb Raider Definitive Edition. This is a game that I didn't expect to like as much as I did. It's more of a third person shooter than a puzzle game like the original Tomb Raider series. And although there are puzzle stuff in it, it that's not, doesn't feel like it's the focus. It was really silly at times, but for whatever reason, it pulled me in, kind of like a bad movie that you end up loving. And yeah, I played the sequel and I ended up hating it. So this game might just be like magic in a bottle. Just everything came together and worked out. So I, I, I don't know, I just liked it. Number three, The Legend of Heroes, Trails from Zero. I played four Legend of Heroes games this year, and this one was the hardest to get my hands on, but it was also the best of those four. I had to use a fan translation to play it. The people at the website, the Geofront, who fan translated the game are just absolute legends, and they nailed it. It's a sprite-based, turn-based JRPG where you play as a rookie detective uncovering a grand government conspiracy. It's very similar to the first three Legend of Heroes games, but this one just feels tighter. It's a single location and feels more focused on the bonds of your team 
and the city that you're in rather than expanding the world. Although there is a lot of world building elements in it. I mean, to sum it up, it's basically just like a really simple anime in game form. And I live for that stuff. It just makes me think of being a kid again and playing these games. Number two, the original Final Fantasy VII. Gotta be honest, I played the remake and was like, I need to replay the original to see if it holds up. And it does for me. Is it flawed? Yeah, the general flow of the game is weird and the story is really convoluted. There are numerous points where I just was like, w w what do I do? And I had to look up a guide to tell me where to go. The graphics have not aged well in general, but I did use a mod that helped fix that. Random battles are not a good mechanic, and generally the battles were slow and there desperately needed to be a fast forward function. And even with all those negatives, it was still amazing to play through and it pulled me in like very few other games have. For one, the music in the game is so good. It just sets the mood perfectly. And the music was the best part of the remake, but there's just this charm to the original that the remake doesn't have. When I was playing it, it felt like I was on an adventure as Cloud with this ragtag group of characters, each with their own stories and journeys, and I always wanted to see what happened next. I was just constantly engaged. And then there's Cloud's story of identity and purpose and trauma and moving on. And a lot of the depth of the story flew right over my 16 year old head from back in the day. There's a lot of discussion in this game about spirituality, magic, and technology. And there's so much to unpack in it where it's like an allegory for global warming and corporate greed and our place in the cosmos and ah, it's good, I like it. Partially the remake is unfinished, it ended right where the original story really begins. And they make this whole side plot about how they're gonna make it that they don't have to follow the original plot of the game and allude that they're gonna change things, but those things that they're changing changes the core of the story in the original. And it's just like, okay, maybe you guys can pull it off, but I don't I don't know, maybe probably not. The original is good. Why did you the Nintendo remade Link's Awakening fine? Why didn't you guys just do that little paint swap and just clean it up? What the heck? Still, I'd highly recommend playing the original with the graphical mods over the remake. It's just a more complete experience. All right, number one, Tetris. I played a lot of Tetris in 2020. I mean, all kinds of versions, the Game Boy version, the DS, Super Nintendo, web browsers. I went on a Tetris craze. It's a simple puzzle game, yet I just couldn't stop. I mean, Tetris and I, we have a history. We go way back. I mean, one of my first YouTube videos was about somebody playing Tetris. And really, this, this game is just timeless. There is no story, just a simple task. Make the blocks go poof. And sometimes, that's all you need in a game. Make the blocks go poof. So yeah, that's the top 10 games I've played in 2020. I think that these 10 games that I've chosen actually tell a story of 2020 in general. Most of the games on this list were about making me feel good, reminding me of simpler times. And I think if the lockdowns and the coronavirus just didn't happen, this list would look different. Like I really got into Mario Tennis during the lockdown when I couldn't play tennis at all. In Super Mario World, playing a game from my childhood just to make me feel good. Tetris, just a mindless escape. I mean, 2020 was just terrible. 2021 just seems to be building on that horror. I know everyone was like, 2021's looking up and, and ho, ho, ho. Uh, at least there's, I hope they release Breath of the Wild too this year. That That's that's something to look forward to. I hope uh, the United States survives. Got, see, oh God.